everyone, this is Al Dakman Barry, and today, uh, more crap I gotta do. If you guys remember, this is what we're doing, and this is what I did so far. Hello! Okay. So I'm going to be using an angle grinder with one of these metal cutting discs. Now, just be careful because there's a lot of different standards for the board diameter. Make sure you get the right one. This particular episode is going to be a lot of safety tips. So one thing I've noticed about this is because of where the handle is, I have been constantly hitting the trigger at all the wrong moments. So obviously you don't want to get your fingers stuck, you don't want to cut something you don't want to hit or scratch something. Whenever you're maneuvering it, get into the habit of grabbing it from a place that's nowhere near the trigger. Now this thing does have this funky trigger guard, but it's useless. You gotta push it in this way, but whenever you're holding it, it's kind of natural to push the tab down. So that makes this a little annoying. You want to use one of these shields and point it to where, if the disc disintegrates like this one has, you're not gonna get hit in the face or whatnot. I also recommend using a face shield or goggles. And as always, clean your work area. And another tip is use a towel and try to cover up anything that's flammable, including your dashboard. All right, I'm gonna adjust my, there we go. I wanna make sure I'm not going to hit any fuel lines. Again, whenever you put it down, keep in mind this thing will spin and it's it can do weird things. Do shortcuts. Make sure you're not going to be cutting anything like exhaust or whatnot. So the problem I'm having right now is, as you can see here, I got a um, what the? I think this is a brake line, and there's a fuel line right somewhere there, and you're probably not going to see it, but you saw it last time. I want to get out as much of these holes as possible by making sure that I'm not cutting anything maybe structural, although this is probably going to say bye-bye to it. Wear your gloves because this stuff is sharp as hell. Wear some sort of eye protection. Most important thing is make sure you got the fire extinguisher and place it somewhere within reach. Wear some sort of face shield because the fumes are pretty nasty. I don't know if you can see me. I'm wearing a bandana because it's better than nothing. Make sure you don't cut your cord. It's exactly the kind of stuff I'm talking about, see? This is a damp towel. What the hell is going on here? Hot! Another tip, 
Don't forget your gloves. It's probably this bean that is really stiff. Black would have So, he's going to take it slow. Uh. <laughs> Once you get like a general perimeter cut, I'm using the tin snips because you're not going to get inside the corners where you can cut. Okay, and then you're going to have chunks like this. Obviously we're moving here. Obviously in this area I'm not going to be able to get to cut it clearly because I don't want to cut this. Right? You see I'm keeping it flush here. So, this is just manual labor. We're going to be smoothing it down once we got everything out of the way. I managed to get a lot of the floorboards out. Now, I'm not really concerned about making cuts perfectly straight right now. That will come with the processing part. Okay, like you can still see here, there's this tab. I want to remove that to get it as flush as that portion there. That actually came out nice, 
So when I weld, it'll make it easier. Now, I still got this area here, and obviously this insanity needs to be done all the way up by the pedals. All right, so what I have here is a sawzall, all right, or a reciprocating saw. What this does is the blade goes back and forth. It might make it a little easier to get into like these really tight corners where a circular cutter will have trouble. So I need to make a incision first. Now I'm going to still need to cut with the circular saw to kind of have room for the sawzall to get in. All right, now this part here is very stiff steel. Woo! And I'm only gonna cut an opening so I can get the saws all in and let that one do like the heavy lifting. got to be careful with what kind of gloves you got because obviously the uh, sparks are very hot and it will melt crappy gloves like this. Obviously, I want to cut all the way up to here. Nice. There we go. See how nice that did it? Did it, did it, did it? All right, so my tip is I like to get it inside the uh, slice, otherwise it's gonna knock it right out of your hand. Yeah, obviously you want to have something steady. see this shit. So on the on one side the, the uh, parking brake was just a hook. On this side it is a closed off piece which I'm going to just cut it this way while carefully making sure I don't cut my parking brake. If you end up seeing this and if I put this in the video, what I did, I didn't go all the way through on this thick piece, but 
it should make it there. See, butter. I was able to cut it with the tin snips. Now, I'll be able to bend this out of the way and make room for the cable to slide right out. Voila! Okay, so, hello transmission. We managed to cut up as far as I'm really willing to go. Now, you can see that there's some rust there. That's a little bit of surface rust. I will grind it down. But that, that is part of the frame. And whatever this stuff is, it's like rubber cement or whatever. They shoved it between the body and the frame. Don't ask me why, it's not supposed to be that way. And it made it basically impossible to remove without cutting some of the frame itself. But I got the welder and I, I don't know. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm gonna just keep this as a support for the frame, a guide support. Same with that one. But to get an idea of what we have done. You can't see it right there. Right, somewhere there in the corner, going vertical, there's another pinhole, but it's significant. So, uh, yeah, gotta get out of here. Oh boy. Uh, anyways, it's a lot of scrap metal. Use two hands, wear some sort of protective gear. My glasses actually help a lot, but don't rely on them because there's stuff that goes around. And once this chaos ends, get a mask. Doesn't have to be an N95. A regular heavy particulate, heavy metal uh, mask should be good. So this is Al Dakman Barry, and I hope you have a great ride. The sea of gray. So, I'm thinking here. <laughs> oh god, this is a little weak. Maybe my hair burning. Make the Flintstones. Have a yabba dabba do time.